Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my special thanks to my esteemed friend, Sheikh Mansour, and I do indeed consider it a real privilege uh, to be invited uh, to this celebration of the birth of Imam Ali. Let me not take up too much of your time tonight, but let me read to you rather uh, two short things that I brought with me. Uh, the first is a statement that I believe is, is very impressive that is written by a number of soldiers of the Israeli Defence Forces. And it reads as follows. Uh, we combat soldiers and officers of the Israeli Defence Forces who have served for long years on various fronts and lost many comrades in the struggle to defend our land. We call upon the Israeli Defence Force regular and reserve troops, pilots, sailors and artillerymen to refuse to shoot on Gaza. The Israeli Defence Force shooting on Gaza has already caused the death of dozens of innocent civilians, including little children. It has achieved nothing but the intensification of the shooting of rockets and the stoking of fires of hatred against Israel. Shooting into the world's most thickly populated area is a war crime, which contravenes the spirit of the army and harms the security of the state. We call upon the soldiers of the IDF to refuse to break the state of Israel's moral spine. True security will never be achieved by the killing of children. It is the right and duty of every soldier to refuse to shed innocent blood. Now this is uh, written by, on behalf of a group known who call themselves Courage to Refuse. And I note as I looked on the internet before I left tonight, uh, currently there are 660 uh, soldiers, uh, both men and women, who have signed the petition and who have gone to prison, uh, not only now for refusing to fight in Gaza, but for refusing to fight in Lebanon. And uh, I salute these people. Uh, I mention this because I believe that the uh, injustices we see around our world are not the injustice of one race of human beings against another race of human beings, but are rather the, the crimes of a corrupt government, um, or perhaps the result of corruption or within a number of governments, uh, including the one of this country. And I want to suggest to you that the uh, Injustice is not wrought in the name of, of the God of one religion against another, and certainly not in the name of Christian religion, even if uh, certain politicians would suggest uh, that they speak for the Christian faith. And this indeed, the other thing I wanted to read for you tonight was simply the recent statement uh, of the World Council of Churches, uh, which represents uh, uh, the churches across the world and I won't read all of it, it's a lengthy statement but uh, if I can read to you briefly from it uh, the Reverend Samuel Kabir, the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches writes in recent days we have all been stirred with compassion and beset with sadness at the shedding of innocent blood in the Middle East the people of Lebanon are suffering violence whose scale defies comprehension uh, citizens of Israel fear death from the sky, Palestinians and Iraqis mourn new losses day after day. No end to the suffering is in sight. The earth shakes in Galilee and nations seem to crumble before our eyes. Ancient cries of anguish echo in our ears. As the prophet Job said, even when I cry out violence I am not answered, I call aloud but there is no justice. At such a time we must turn to God with our laments, seek comfort from each other and offer signs of hope to neighbours in distress. The international community's capacity in such a crisis grows if it finds unity around what needs to be done. Alternatives to violence in Lebanon, Israel and Gaza are well within its grasp, including ceasefires that end the spiral of violence, pressure to stop attacks on innocent civilians and protection for civilians according to international humanitarian law support for negotiations on equitable terms and the deployment of a multinational force capable of keeping peace. However, instead of policies anchored in law, certain states seem bent upon applying new and dangerous remedies to well-known problems in the region.
their leaders excuse uses of force that go well beyond the constraints of international law. They brand enemies as terrorists, bypass laws, courts and juries, and mete out punishment at will, even including assassinations from the air. As churches, we are inheritors of resolute hope. Our tradition is to support those who suffer, to assist those in need, and to advocate for those denied justice. Let us then raise our laments to God and bring the requirements of peace to those who have ears to hear. My friends, let me again say that uh, I read this not to suggest that the churches have the answers, but simply as a reminder that uh, people around the world, uh, Christians and Jews as well, uh, are in horror of the terrors that take place and the injustice. And I believe all of us uh, in solidarity uh, pray for an end to the injustice and the suffering. And I thank you for your hospitality towards me this evening.